my, my story begins, I, I was passionate about waste management right from university. But when I finished college, I worked a lot with vulnerable groups. So that was a street connected youth and women um, and Kisumu. And part of our work was to you know, improve their livelihoods and give them opportunities to su sort of survive, right? And when we dug a little bit deeper, we understood that 80% of this population are waste workers. So we started understanding what are the challenges in this space, right? And we understood that, that the roles that they play within the sector are bottom chain, right? They're scavengers. They're literally trying to survive from the waste sector. So we wanted to understand why is it a challenge, yet so many young people are unemployed, so much waste is being generated, uh, over 3,000 tons, and, 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 and we wanted to understand how then can we shift this big problem into an opportunity, right? And if you look at the waste sector currently, a lot of the stakeholders here will tell you that, that there's a lot of waste being generated and there's a big opportunity, but they don't tell you the true picture of the gap in people getting involved in waste work. It is not as rewarding as we want to put it across, right? And the people currently who are in the waste sector, it is considered undignified, right? Uh, is it how many times do you, do you walk into a space where people are handling waste and you see a woman putting on a gear and saying, I am proud to be a waste collector? It's not, it's not an everyday sort of picture, right? But where is that gap, right? So, so we understood that, that even if you look at some of the opportunities that enable people benefit from which, which is recycling, yeah. over 3,000 tons generated, 70% um, is collected, of course, 50% ends up in the dump site, but only 20% is recycled. So we need to understand why is the recycling culture low? If you look at plastics alone, 9%, only 9% is recycled. So we understood that the, the, the gap really lied in people understanding waste management, the consumer behavior, right? Mm -hmm. so, so he says that once you mix, <laughs> once you mix waste, and then, and then uh, you mix the organic waste and, and, and the dry waste, then the value goes down, right? But why does that, 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 why, why does that happen? It's because at the source yeah. where we have the households, there is no separation. So of the gaps we identified that then we built a solution for was that there was a limited separation of waste at source. Mm -hmm. There was undignified waste sector that we had to then make it you know, very attractive and very friendly for young people to get involved in. And then finally, there was an issue of, 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 of course, policy enforcement, which, which, which is a gap in data. So what we built as an intervention is just, uh, we leverage technology. Yeah. And, and I love what the, the, the Dr. Director Ayub talked about, incentivizing action, right? Yeah. We understood that the only way to make the sector as rewarding and as inclusive and as dignifying for the key stakeholder that does the work, which is the waste pick and the waste collector, was if we incentivized, right? So we built a tool that allows the household who is doing this work to be rewarded, yeah. so they're able to separate at source. We built a system that allowed the waste collector to be trained, to be given gears, to be given the right tools to recover this resource. Mm -hmm. And then we collaborated with the county, you know, because Kisumu has done quite tremendous work. Yeah. And they've set up, I think, one of the first county established MRFs, right? They have about five right now. Mm -hmm. And we collaborated with the county to then um, um, optimize this, this facility. And as we aggregate to this facility and yeah. we're able to get margins on the recyclables, are we able to then ensure that this can transfer back to the household to take action, mm. but most importantly, give the waste collector, the waste picker, yeah. a fair wage, right? Okay. Uh, if, if you're talking about earning 15 shillings or 20 shillings, can this go high up to, to, to 30 shillings? Because plastic started at 10, 15 shillings when it started, but right now in Kisumu, it's about 30, 35 shillings. Yeah. That tells you that a shift, right? So our intention was that get the price higher, mm. get it fair, reward the people involved in the process, and then yeah. it pre presents an opportunity. Okay. So that's how we, we were able to, to build, and I'm happy to say that having trained over 200 people, having impacted over 4,000 community members with our work, yeah. um, we have women who now are proud to become MTACA agents, because then I, I am rewarded yeah. to take time off my work to pick recyclables, take it to the facility and earn from it. Great. How big right. is your workforce right now? Um, so we have a team of five, but then for the peop people that work, we have about 25. Um, um, we call them uh, waste workers yeah. that support our work. So it's yes. also a source of employment for most people. Definitely. And yeah. I think indirectly we've impacted over 150 
yeah. you know, people because you see recycling is, is a whole ecosystem. Yeah. You know, it, it's collective it's action, value right? Chain. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a whole value chain. And, and for us to even operate a facility, we ensure that you have to also buy from, from small aggregators. Okay. Yeah, so we are tapping, as we introduce technology in the sector, yeah. we're also understanding that there is an existing value chain that existed okay. and we're just complementing.